This is Caleb Jones. This is Alpha Male 2.0, Freedom Focused Lifestyle Design for Men. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. We do five videos a week here on how to make both your woman life and your business life more free because you need both. Let's talk about prenups, prenuptial agreements. Yay, what a fun topic. Everyone loves talking about this. This is great. <laughs> now, before I get into this, I have to qualify this statement. Usually they're not called prenups or prenuptial agreements wherever it is you live. That's kind of an outdated term. Usually it's a different term for these things, but they accomplish the same thing, number one. Number two, in most parts of the Western world, a prenup is not enforceable. So you can get a prenup with your future wife-to-be, you can get married, you can do everything the prenup says. A few years later you could get divorced, she can walk into court with that prenup and challenge it and the judge will laugh at you and light it on fire and you're fucked. So I want to be aware of those two things. There are some places where they are enforceable. There are some places where they're not enforceable at all. There are some places where they're enforceable, but only if you do certain things. Beyond the scope of this particular video, I want to give you the overall point and the overall argument of having some kind of financial protection when you move in with a woman or legally marry a woman. Second one is very dangerous, but whatever. Again, topic for another time. Here is the analogy that I have used with people I personally know, friends of mine, family members, and yes, even women I have dated in the past. And this is how it works. Let's say you have a couple, man, woman, couple. They're dating and they're very serious and now they're talking about getting engaged, talking about getting married. And let's say that the man, for argument's sake, the man has $10 million in his checking account. 10 million. A lot of commas and zeros and shit. $10 million, okay? Let's say. Caleb, he can't have $10 million in his checking account. Actually, yes, you can. I think you can. <laughs> but you, not literally in a checking account. But let's say he has $10 million liquid cash, okay? For purposes of this analogy, let's say he has a checking account and there's $10 million in his checking account, okay? The boyfriend. Okay, now let's say the woman, the woman has in her checking account 247 bucks. Let's draw that correctly. 247 bucks, that's what she has in her checking account. Okay, so he has $10 million in his checking account. The woman has $247 in her checking account. Now, with this in mind, the man says to the woman, I love you, I wanna be with you the rest of my life, uh, I wanna have children with you, blah, 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 all the Disney shit that women want in marriage. And because of this disparity, you're gonna to have to sign a prenuptial agreement. Because I have no problem helping you out and, and giving you access to my money while you're my wife, but if you suddenly decide to not be my wife, I don't see the point of giving you money for no reason. Because I have $10 million and you have 247 bucks. Okay, let's say she then says, no, I'm not signing that, how dare you? Let's say, for argument's sake. And a lot of women, by the way, these days don't say that, but a lot of women still do. So let's say she says no. So then he says, why? Why not? She needs to have a rational, fact-based answer to that question. Rational, logical, fact-based answer to that question. Because again, we're talking about $10 million versus 247, for example. So if she says something like, if she gives an answer that is not rational, logical, and objective, if she says something like, well, you know, sometimes in life you just have to trust, or, well, that's not a real marriage, that's not a marriage, that's a fake marriage, or the Bible says this and this and this, or my mom wouldn't like that, these are all emotional answers. These are emotional reasons. Now, in the woman world, when women are expressing their feelings, or when women talk to other women, or when women talk about relationships and feelings and emotions and touchy-feelies, emotional points are valid. These points are not, I don't disparage the way that women communicate or the way women feel. It's valid. It's valid in their world. But when we're discussing these kinds of disparities in terms of real finances and real numbers, when these topics come up, women, unfortunately, I know they hate this sometimes, they have to be objective, rational, and logical. So in this scenario, if the man says that, 
And she says no, and she, he says why, and she gives him a bunch of emotional reasons that sound good to her heart, but are not rational, logical, or emotional, that means that he cannot marry that woman because she's not acknowledging this. And as a woman in the modern era where the divorce rate is around 46% among people who actually get married, a woman has to, unfortunately, I wish they didn't have to do this, I wish the divorce rate was 2%. That'd be wonderful, but it's not. So unfortunately, women have to acknowledge these realities the same way that men do by demanding prenups if a woman wants to live with them. And in terms of living with them, it would be a cohabitation agreement. In terms of marriage, it would be a prenuptial agreement, what have you. Same concept applies here. Men have to insist on these things, and women have to agree to them when disparities are like this. Now, to be fair, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of women, when you give her this example, because I've given this example to several women, most women, I would say most in my experience go, yeah, I understand, that makes sense to me. Yes, I get it. No, I completely understand that. So it's not all doom and gloom here. I'm saying that when discussing these topics, you cannot be swayed, especially if you love her very much, especially if she's a wonderful person, you cannot be swayed by emotional reasons when dealing with hard numbers. Now, if the disparity wasn't the case, if he was worth 10 million and she was worth 10 million, then okay, fine. If he had 240 bucks, just like she did, then it would be fine. But when there's a disparity like this, in an era where there's a 76% divorce rate, you have to acknowledge the numbers. And I don't like it. I don't like that people have to go through that. It's the reality. So just be aware as a man, when you bring up topics like this, Sometimes the woman that you're dating or your fiance or God forbid in some cases your wife are going to use emotions on you and you can't fall for it when you're dealing with real numbers. Very, very important. If you need more help with this, if you need more help with your business life or your woman life, join smic.com. That is my membership and coaching program. Check it out. Have fun. See you in a little bit. Bye.